Welcome to the Northwest Brewing Football Show. I'm the head coach, Josh Robinson, here um, to talk about Northwest Brewing Football. Uh, this past Friday, we took on the Cahull Creek Colts out on uh, Northwest Field and unfortunately came up on the losing end um, of the scoreboard of what uh, many fans would call an exciting uh, game uh, with that went to three overtimes. First overtime game played by Northwest, I believe, in seven years to the best of my recollection. Um, a lot of things went wrong and, and our, you know, it was entertaining because both teams played hard, uh, plenty of mistakes to go across the board and unfortunately led to us um, coming up short on the scoreboard. Uh, on the night, our, our offense had a tough time getting going. Um, field conditions were really rough, um, not one to, I try not to blame outside factors, but um, with what we're trying to do and spread people out and get the ball out on the perimeter, it makes it really tough when the field is, is really it's as sloppy as I've ever seen it. Um, it and it resulted in Owen Brooker going 9 for 23 for 56 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Owen would definitely tell you that he was probably and should be satisfied with his rushing uh, and his legs did a really good job. But, you know, out of those nine completions, he had a couple falling complete that were, were dropped, um, just a couple of overthrows, just not a particularly sharp night um, for Owen, but he did a great job with his legs. He had nine rushes for 81 yards and a touchdown of 25 yards. So, uh, you know, he's a, he's a dual threat. We're going to let him run a little more this year. It's a little risky um, because of injuries and that kind of thing. But in the end, we have to try and win a football game and, and injuries are part of football. And hopefully we don't suffer any more than we already have uh, going through this year. And we definitely want to keep Owen healthy. Uh, our, another running back force, Adrian Reyes, came in with 21 carries for 80 yards and a touchdown. Adrian ran really hard for us. He's a, he's a tough competitor. He's coming off a of shoulder surgery. He tore his labrum um, late in the year. Last year, I think he played three or four games, which is not easy, very difficult, uh, very physical runner. Um, we were glad to see him back out there. He had some soreness because it's the first time really getting hit, but ultimately, provided what Adrian has always provided for us is that's tough yards between the tackles. And then we had a freshman, Cameron Collins, contribute a couple of carries for a few yards there. He's going to be a really good football player for us. He's done a, a good job at camp and leading up till now. Um, but Adrian's back, so, you know, he's we got an experienced guy and a freshman. He's just taking a, uh, a backup role and is going to do a serviceable job and, and be ready to step in um, in any given, any given game where it's needed. Uh, receiving, Ray Morrison had four catches for 30 yards. You know, we, we missed Ray on a few throws and, um, you know, he missed the first quarter. It just wasn't a, a perfect night. We're trying to get him the ball and we've got to have other guys around him uh, make more plays. We had too many drops among our wide receiver crew. Uh, a couple for a touchdown, a couple for big plays, and we just have to make those plays. That's the bottom line, um, you know, and, and again, I don't blame anybody but myself. Uh, our, our players have to come out ready to do those things in those situations, and, and I have to continue to press them to get them to achieve and catch those balls and when given the opportunity. Um, Hudson Gray on the night had three catches for 12 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Hudson's young. We put a lot on him. He's starting both ways. He's punting. Um, he's kind of assuming a, a maybe a miniature Matthew Redmond type role for us. And, you know, first game, he had some first game blues. And he'll get better. He's a competitor. He's a great worker, uh, a really good athlete and a good football player. Um, the, the season's only going to go better for Hudson and our football team, we feel for sure. Braden Morrison had two catches for 10 yards, had some of the best perimeter blocking that, that we've had at Northwest. And, many, many years, and especially early in the season. Typically, that's a big-time issue. I was really proud of Braden, um, somebody that we're definitely going to try to get the ball more um, to. But, you know, again, situations and uh, defense alignments and post-snap, pre-snap dictations by the defense kind of uh, dic determine where we're going we're gonna to send stuff. So, um, in the end, we, we've got to do a, a job as a coaching staff trying to get Braden some more catches. And, you know, we, ha we have a couple more receivers in there, and Jace Talley and Braxton Floyd, who are rotational guys and 
Jason's a starter for us, and Braxton kind of plays everywhere in defense as well. And we have to continue to, to push those guys to achieve, to block, uh, to catch the ball when given those opportunities. The catch is way more important than the run afterwards. Um, and we'll, our guys will continue to, to fight and do that. You know, the, the good news is, is despite all the things that went wrong, our kids, including our receivers, played really hard on Friday. So, um, you know, our, our offensive line was solid, nothing spectacular. Um, in a lot of ways better than first games in the past couple of years, but in some ways it, extremely worse. So we just have to grow as a unit. We expect our offense to be explosive, um, dynamic, and, and to put up a lot of points, uh, you know, and, and that varies from week to week, and we know there's factors that go into that. But growing up is, is going to be a big thing, and understand with expectations there, there must come results, and we didn't have the results this past Friday, so we definitely are looking for better results this coming Friday. At this time, let's take a look at the first half highlights. We started off the game by kicking the ball in the end zone. Grant Holder, a new player for us, doing a really good job. And here they are throwing the ball deep. And, um, you know, Dominic Smith ends up making a good late play, a little slow with his hips, but a good late play. And Jax Brooker making one of his tackles. Caden Ramsey um, in on it. I believe Will Roper there. They completed a couple of passes on us. We're a little soft at corner there. We got to play a little more physical, but a good open field tackle by our freshman Caden Ramsey coming down. Uh, they ended up scoring, and um, somehow they didn't blow the play dead, and then afterwards said it was a false start, and they got to re-kick it. But in the end, it is what it is, and they kicked off to us, and Owen gets a big gain. They, they had good coverage on a pass that we had with a good crowd by both teams, and Owen gets a big carry, and again, we're going to give uh, Owen the, a chance to make plays with his arm and with his feet this year, and a uh, big play by Owen gets called back. Uh, there and here Adrian Reyes makes a big gain up the middle to about the one and a half yard line. Hudson Gray going in motion and we run a little out route and there uh, we're hair slow delivering the ball but a good catch by Hudson. Uh, extra point by Grant Holder to, to put us uh, on a tie game. Jaden Santiago with a big tackle for a loss there. They're in a sprint out, good coverage by Reese Cowart right here. Uh, making the ball fall incomplete. And after the first drive, we really settled in for quite some time uh, playing solid defense. Here they uh, end up punting the ball, getting a favorable roll for Cahoa Creek, and it ends up on the 36-yard line. We go backwards, end up uh, punting it around, and there's a, there's a good tackle by Reese Cowart putting, making them put the ball on the ground. Uh, here they are attacking our, our end zone, and we kind of got good coverage here by Dominique and some pressure by Miles Mays and a few other guys to make them uh, go into a, a uh, panic situation. Here we cause a fumble. Uh, Braxton Floyd causes the fumble and recovers it, and for whatever reason it was ruled down. Even though it was not, a flag was called. They end up throwing a screen with a good tackle by Will Roper. Uh, for a loss on fourth down and end up uh, making them kick a field goal. I believe to go up 10 to seven. Here's Will Roper, De La Paz, and Jaden Santiago with some pressure. Um, coverage by, I believe that was Hudson Gray. I can't swear to it, uh, as he appeared late in the TV screen. There's uh, Caden Ramsey with another good play for us. And you can just see the terrible field conditions. I, I, th I think we have a water leak or something going on because our field was softer than any football field I've ever been on in my entire life and I know it rained a lot but um, it should have dried out more than what it was and you can just see both teams are in the muck and mire and uh, you know there's Owen having a hard time making a cut but being a strong athlete that he is he gets a big gain of about 15 16 yards there to get us up to midfield driving again Owen tucks it and runs makes a big play with his feet good block by Ray Morrison needs to stay on it a little longer and then Owen gets out of bounds uh, deep in Cahoa territory, and I believe we ended up uh, uh, missing a field goal in that situation. Good play by Jaden Santiago, I believe Dominic Smith, and like seeing our guys uh, do, do those things to, to go make big plays. There's Isaiah Foster with maybe not great coverage, but at the same time gets a good return. He's got to put his head down and get in the end zone right there as he uh, gets close to the end zone, and we go into halftime. Uh, leading 13 to 10. At this time, let's take a look at our corporate sponsors.
Welcome back to the Northwest Brim Football Show. I'm Josh Robinson. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about our defense. We started the night really shaky, giving up a, a, a couple of long pass plays. Uh, we just didn't have good technique on. Um, Cahoa made a, a good throw and a good catch on, on both the balls, but at the same time, we didn't offer much resistance. Um, and then after that, we really settled in and did a fairly good drive until the very last one that ended up tying the game. We just allowed them to uh, six, eight inch first down us to death um, on that drive. And then we had an opportunity to um, secure the game with an interception. And, and it, that wasn't the only one. There were multiple times, you know, I'm sure people at other schools will get upset that, I'm, you know, I talk about the mistakes we made at the same time. You know, my major concern is Northwest High School, and there were so many opportunities for us to secure the game, not only on the last drive, but as we go throughout, to get a two-touchdown lead, uh, to not fumble, to get good field position, and we just seemed to botch all those opportunities and allow them to score. Um, I thought our defense did a pretty good job on a deep turnover in our, in our territory to uh, limit them to a, a field goal. On, on that particular possession. But well, again, and we've got to be better. We're missing a couple of guys, a couple of our starters, Iker Alston and Connor Cummins, going to play a huge role for us throughout the year. And both of those guys were out, and we definitely miss them. Uh, look forward to having them back, but it'll be a couple of games before we get them back. Um, so in the meantime, we have to grow up and we have to play better. Our D-line was solid on the night, um, led by Reyes De La Paz, who graded out spectacularly and also played some outside linebackers for us. Only had uh, three tackles and a tackle for a loss, but playing multiple positions, he kind of had practiced outside linebacker a little bit. And when we lost a, a kid late in the day on Friday, it, it kind of thrust him into an opportunity to come uh, and, and be a part of the linebacking crew. And it's difficult. There's a lot to learn back there. He only made what I call one critical mistake. And that's, um, you know, I wish he hadn't made any, but at the same time, that's pretty good considering he hadn't practiced there. Uh, Junior Aguirre for us um, had three tackles and a tackle for a loss. Junior was um, way better than it, I told him today at practice. You, you were way better um, Friday than you were at any point last year. So that's a good building block. He's a big 300 pound nose for us that we asked to occupy blockers and make a few tackles when he has a chance. He had those tackles and that tackle for a loss and that's big. And then the fact that he was a conditioned well enough to play 58 plays on the first game is a really good sign for us. Uh, moving on to uh, Miles Mays. Miles is um, a freshman for us and did an outstanding job in his first uh, game for us playing meaningful reps. He had playing on a broke hand, probably never been injured in his life based off of my conversations with him. Played 41 plays for us and had four tackles, two tackles for a loss, a sack, and three quarterback pressures. Um, pretty lofty comparison I'm about to make, but he reminds Coach Miner and I of Isaiah Mack when he was young uh, so much, just the way he plays blocks and the learning progression that you can see him going through and, and the potential that he shows. So we certainly hope he blossoms into a shell of what Isaiah Mackey was and is, and um, we definitely think he's got those opportunities. But again, he has to advance quickly and, and become a really good player for us, and I think he's on that track. Dawson Wheeler played offensive line and defensive line for us and gave us some very solid snaps, 36 plays, and had four tackles with a, a solid grade over all, and then a couple of his um, teammates on the O-line. Austin Duncan played solid for us. Uh, didn't really have an opportunity to make many tackles um, based off of where he was aligned and, and where the plays went as he was in the game. Alex Starks um, had a, a few plays for us. Chase Murphy and Riley Bonanno all contributed. They were all offensive linemen that came in and played some for us. Uh, at the linebacking crew, um, Jax Brooker played outstanding. Uh, for us, he had 18 tackles and blocked the extra point that would have sealed the victory with, uh, I think it was like 3.3 seconds left, if memory serves me correct. Uh, so, Jack's played out just unbelievable. For a first game, you know, he, he it is his second year playing. He had a lot of experience, but the the difference in how he ended last year and began this year, you can already see the growth he's undergone as a football player. He does a, he does a really good job. Logan Arnold. 
uh, replacing one of our injured guys, came in as a sophomore with eight tackles coming off of ACL tear, uh, really hasn't got a lot of high school experience in general, uh, and I thought did a solid job for us. Will Roper, one of our seniors, stepped into one of those outside linebacker roles and ended up with an eight tackles and one tackle for a loss, and then Jaden Santiago finished with nine tackles and two tackles for a loss, and Jaden, unfortunately, we had to move from inside to outside linebacker based off of some injuries and some other things going on. Um, definitely more suited and more experienced to play inside, but for a few weeks he's going to be outside and he's got to continue to grow and show that progression that we're looking for and help lead our team as the only senior in our linebacking crew. And then our secondary, um, nobody had an outstanding game, nobody had a, a terrible game. Uh, Isaiah Foster, a sophomore for us who's coming off an injury, we wish could have played more, but you know he's still recovering from an injury a couple weeks ago that left him hobbled. Um, he had a huge interception for us that was returned, I believe, to the two-yard line. Um, but we're starting a freshman back there in Caden Ramsey, who's done a solid job. Uh, Dominic Smith is an experienced guy, and then Braxton Floyd um, and Hudson Gray both contributed for us, and then Reese Coward is a junior who's worked his way into uh, uh, playing time for us. So overall, you know, we had contributions, and I don't feel like we played terribly on Friday. Um, we just missed a couple opportunities at some big plays, especially on some uh, jump ball situations that we lost or um, that, that fell incomplete that we had a, a chance to intercept. And we've got to go make those plays, um, and we've got to be better up front and fix our fits as a outside linebacking crew. And, Again, we'll continue to work on those things and grow. Uh, good news is, is the sun came out the next day and our, our young men went back to work and they'll have an opportunity to go perform against Gordon Central and to grow and get ready for region play so we can make another uh, playoff appearance and, and, and run in the playoffs as we've become accustomed to these last several years. At this time, let's take a look at our second half highlights. We deferred the second half and it really uh, ended up being um, we didn't do much with our opportunities here. It was third and long, and uh, uh, Owen's a great football player, ends up making a long run there, and uh, still have to punt it away. And then uh, Jaden Santiago, I believe Jax Brooker in on the tackle run in the counter. There's one of Logan Arnold's plays where you can tell he's starting to get it. We have to be smart there and keep our hands off people's face masks. Um, with one of our older guys throwing the ball deep, uh, kind of got us beat on coverage. We've got to do a better job. Uh, ultimately end up making them punt the ball away and we end up with decent field position you know when you can get it around that 35 40 yard mark you feel good and here we end up Braxton Floyd gets a solid return for us one of our new starters getting all the way to the 45 and ultimately we went backwards uh, Miles Mays applying some pressure and the field conditions there prevented the ball from being thrown um, good read by Jax Brooker uh, Logan Arnold's got to keep going and running through and, and so does Will Roper, but our guys are playing hard. Good technique by Dawson, but he did Whitmore, but he's got to uh, break his feet down. And ultimately, I took a hold the call to try and back them up right there and produce an opportunity for us to get even better field position. Thankfully, Jax uh, makes an unbelievable tackle for us um, to, to preserve that and make it a, a good call. Because I kind of went against the books right there because our offense was struggling so mightily. Ultimately, we, we get the ball in great field position around that 35-yard that mark, and we're starting to carry, and at this point, our, our guys are playing hard. I believe uh, we had fumbled, we'd snapped the ball over our quarterback's head, and Owen couldn't recover it, and I believe Cahoe Creek had ended up kicking a field goal to tie the game at 13, and here our guys are really just physically taking over the game, and our O-line's doing a good job, and um, they're really tired and, and wore out, and our guys keep pressing. Got slowed down by the official a couple of times, spotting the ball in the wrong place, but ultimately our guys keep pushing and pressing, and Owen finds a way with those hard yards to get in the end zone to put us up 19 to 13, and what a, a huge miss extra point we had there um, on that particular possession to keep it only at a six point uh, advantage. We put some pressure on with Will Roper, and they're able to. Um, we, we end up making them punt the ball, and uh, again, just great field goal or field position right there at the 50. You kind of can't ask more. And uh, Jace Talley, I believe that is, no, that's Braden Morrison, makes a good catch for us um, and gets us down, but ultimately we can't convert. And those kind of opportunities that in a football game like this become huge when you've got good field position, you move, and you just don't accomplish what you want, scoring a touchdown. Um, they're kind of able to churn the clock and move and 
uh, constantly get first downs just a little bit at a time. Here they throw a jump ball. We've got a great chance to go up and make an interception. Their player makes a good catch, but at the same time we have to high point that. That's all opportunities we have to we have to take advantage of. Here we've got them uh, slowed down on third down, and they end up uh, ultimately going for it on fourth down and picking it up. And here, you know, this is a, one of the final drives here to, to tie the game in regulation. Um, big run right there that we were able to find a way to get a stop on. Uh, running the counter, good play by Dawson Wheeler. Uh, I was reading the, the, the counter, getting inside, making the tackle, and ultimately we miss a jump ball that would have secured the victory. And Jax Brooker blocks field goal. Owen provides the pressure, and we get the opportunity to go to overtime and, and instead of losing in regulation. And we kind of get a goal line stop here uh, after they scored. And, We've got a chance now to all we have to do is score and kick an extra point. We win the game and we do the first part and we score. And then I believe we get the extra point blocked. It was uh, by mistakes. And, you know, their player made a good play, and but we made a poor decision on how to block there. Uh, ultimately, um, our guys are playing hard, keeping them out of the end zone, trying to prevent them from uh, scoring, um, you know, it's third down right here, and then they line up, kick a field goal. They got the ball first. Uh, we make them kick a field goal, and, and they miss it. Uh, and it gives us an opportunity to come out and we score and we win the football game. Uh, but in the end, that is definitely not what happened. And, and we gave up a first play touchdown in the third overtime and then went four and out. Uh, to reach the final score of Cahoe Creek 31, Northwest 25. At this time, let's take a look at our corporate sponsors. Welcome back to the Northwest Brewing Football Show. Um, we appreciate everyone um, tuning in tonight to, to watch our uh, show over our Northwest Brewing, something we're really proud of. We're not proud of the results we had past Friday, uh, but unfortunately, you know, that's kind of the way life goes sometimes. You, you've got to uh, take some adversity and turn it into something positive, and I believe our guys have had a good week of practice and started that process, but the healing process is never complete until you get to the next Friday, and we try to parallel our football season to life and how closely associated uh, when things go wrong and there's a tough night or a tough day at home or you don't feel good, you got to get up and go back to work and that's ultimately the, the cure-all. You know, I, I know sometimes coaches, I know we kind of sat around and tried to figure some things out this weekend and um, fans and, and the football team, I know the natural instincts is maybe to panic or try to look for some quick fix, but the, at the end of the day, there is no quick fix. The, the quick fix is to get up and go back to work and learn from your mistakes and not let it happen again. Um, this coming Friday, we will take on Gordon Central High School here. We've bought them out to come to our stadium both years, uh, and we look forward to hosting them. Um, it was supposed to be wreck and middle school night, and unfortunately this, this is not something that we're going to get to have because it's COVID becomes a concern. We don't want to put those uh, little kids, the direct kids, in jeopardy of, of any kind of risk. And we don't want to put our middle school teams on a bus and bring them over like we usually do and feed them a pregame meal with us and, and get, us, get them involved in what we do. Uh, but at the same time, that would put them at risk for missing a game and quarantining, all those kind of things. So unfortunately, not going to get to do that. Hopefully, you know, um, Lord willing, the COVID stuff will go away one day or be better controlled so that we can get back to a, a normal atmosphere. We love having our future Bruins at all levels over here, and that's just something that we're not able to do this year. Um, you know, come out and support. Uh, again, the boys probably need you more when things go bad than they do when things go well. Um, I know our band's been working really hard and our cheerleaders uh, to 
put on a Friday night show and our, our new administration, uh, Ms. Jones and, and Mr. Shields have been outstanding for us and continue to support us and our young men and, and win or lose, they, they're going to be there and they've already shown that and we're so greatly appreciative of them for that. Uh, and at the same time, we have other sports going on. Our softball team is a really good, good team uh, with a mixture of experienced and inexperienced players. Uh, and our volleyball team is, is defending region champions, I believe, and uh, made it to the, the state championship last year. And they have some people to replace, but at the same time, they've got some really big talent coming back. So uh, come out and support those, those girls and, and um, our football team and our cross country team, the whole, the whole thing. Uh, there's so much that goes into being a high school student. Um, you know, there's, there's students that venture different ways and do different things and anybody that's involved in an extracurricular, um, in my opinion, especially a sport, um, is making extreme sacrifices with their time and their effort and expectation levels held to, to them. So any kind of support you give um, is greatly appreciated, even though um, it may not always be said. Um, until next week, this is Josh Robinson with Northwest Football.